the reason for A&A. As a staff auditor, uh, I never checked a mailing address, never checked contact information for any location where I was sending a confirmation. Uh, as a senior auditor, I never taught my staff to check a mailing address or a fax number or an email address. And what I recognized was that the entire profession, uh, that held true. And so really over the last 19 years I've been doing the research and talking to the firms, uh, almost without exception, uh, there's no firm out there that's really checking mailing addresses or really doing it appropriately. And it's not just checking mailing addresses. What you also have to do is you not only have to verify that the entity really is that entity, you also are supposed to verify that the responder really is that responder and that they're authorized and knowledgeable uh, in order to respond. Uh, and so while some people may just check a mailing address, uh, others won't go to that next level to actually verify that the responder is authorized and knowledgeable. That leads to a, a huge opportunity for fraud to occur. Uh, we've seen it time and time again. In fact, in every one of the fraud cases that we've seen where people have inflated revenue or stolen cash, uh, it's because they circumvented the confirmation procedures and really what was circumvented was what we call the authentication authorization procedures, which were never done appropriately. Uh, so you take a number of the different frauds, whether that was Parmalat, whether that was Olympus, uh, HealthSouth, uh, Satiam, uh, Peregrine Financial Group here in the U.S. Uh, we see it time and time again where the auditor's procedures uh, were really short-circuited. The auditors out there are not checking mailing addresses and typically we leave it up to the staff auditors to do that uh, if they were going to do it at all. Uh, what's interesting though is I'll be in a room and ask different staff auditors and some will say they'll, they'll use uh, Yahoo, some will use Google, some will use the yellow pages and there's inconsistency in audit procedures. And that's a bad thing for, uh, for firms as well because if you ever happen to be in a court of law and one staff audited it one way and another staff audited it a different way, well that creates doubt in terms of how you did the procedures. Uh, what we also know is that even in cases where some firms have said they've started to ask their staff to verify where they're sending a confirmation, we know that they're not documenting where they're sending the confirmations. And what we do at confirmation.com is we created that clearinghouse where we said, look, if we can go out and do the a, &A procedures once and do it really, really well, then every firm can rely on that, which is why we have our SOC 1, our SOC 2, and our SOC 3, and it's the SOC 1 that really covers our a, &A procedures. And we have auditors who come in and verify uh, that we're doing our authentication authorization procedures correctly so that every firm out there, the 13,000 firms that are using us, they can all rely on that instead of having every staff auditor at your firm doing it and every staff auditor at every firm doing A&A. &A, uh, you, can, you can count on us to do it once and do it really, really well. And we're your advocates. We're not working on behalf of your clients. And so we're there to protect your interest uh, as it relates to where you're sending those confirmations.